Welcome back, everyone, to the BlastCast. You're looking to everything that's Baltimore Blast soccer. I am your host, Brad Crossley, and it's hard to believe we're already here at the season wrap-up show. And who better to have with me here today than Baltimore Blast owner Ed Hale and head coach David Bascom. Guys, thank you for being on the wrap-up show this week. Uh, we're going to talk about some overall stuff for the season, maybe some specific things that we'll get into here. But, uh, Ed, I'll start with you first. Uh, from an organization standpoint, from an owner standpoint, uh, what were your thoughts on, on the season as a whole? Well, we this was a rebuilding year. We can sugarcoat it any other way you want to put it, but we had four or five players that were not with us, but that were with us the year before and were not with us with the beginning of the season. And so we had a rebuilding year. The coach here and uh, Neto and Sergio had to get together a team uh, so they could play together well. And we started off a little bit slow, losing record at the beginning of the season, but we started getting together at the end. Actually, at the end, uh, we were playing really, really well. David had him playing well. In uh, Chihuahua, Monterey, we played some good games. We really knocked, we knocked uh, Utica off in our last home game. And, uh, you know, I thought that we were really starting to gel with the players that we had, which were really not first-line players that we'd had in the past. So I was very pleased with, uh, you know, how we did on the field. Uh, I was very pleased about how we did on attendance merchandise, concessions, pretty much everything, every metric that you could have, we did we did very, very well compared to previous years. And uh, so we're just happy with the way it, it turned out. On a negative side, uh, the outdoor game that we were going to have on uh, March 23rd at uh, United Stadium at Towson University, the weather could not have been more horrible. So we had to, we had to really forfeit that game against Dallas. And... Uh, that, you know, that was really, I was looking forward to that personally because I've been trying to do this for many, many years. And it was going to happen and the weather just knocked us out. Um, so when that, when that was probably the one negative of the year, but uh, I plan on trying to do it again next year, just for what it's worth. That's, that's, that'll be exciting. And I'm gonna, I wanna, we're gonna, I wanna jump back really quickly here in just a second about the Spring Classic, but um, David, I wanna get, come to you. Um, kind of the same question, but more from uh, a coach's standpoint, a player's standpoint. What was your overall uh, thoughts on, the, on how the season went? Uh, it was it good enough? Um, I love winning, and it just was not good enough. And it, it, it uh, change is apparent, and changes will be made. Uh, and that's in a short. Um, I know that the fans love to see the results on a positive. Uh, but there are some things that, some good things that came out of the season with the young, the younger players, uh, bringing on Pacheco, uh, you know, 23 year old, uh, thought he did, played very well. He got time to be on the field, uh, in, uh, including players like Diegas, uh, Victor, and then you're looking at Omar, you know, a young player that came in that ended up getting more time, um, you know, so he can get his legs underneath, and and, and that's just it. It's in the short. It wasn't good enough. It, it must be better. Uh, this, fr this franchise calls for, for great success, and you know we want to win the championship. Ed, I want to go back to you now, and something you brought up, and that was the Spring Classic. So uh, this is going to be a, a, a great event, kind of an homage to what the NHL does with kind of their uh, you know their Winter Classic stuff. So we're going to again move the outdoor field or the indoor field outdoors, play that game. I know a lot of time and effort and went into that. Talk a little bit about. And of course, we got hit with unfortunate Baltimore weather. Uh, it happened to be that weekend. Uh, just talk. It, it was like a cold hurricane. It, yeah, it was. Uh, talk about um, how difficult that decision was to make, and what kind of what went into that decision. Well, this all began during the COVID time. Actually, the year before COVID, I thought, why, why don't we try to do something like the NFL or NHL did? Put put a game outside. <clears throat> it's got. 12,000 seats there, we simply discount the tickets, have more people come to see a game out there, it would be unique if it was warm enough. And uh, at the end of the season is something that we were looking to do, uh, do this so that it was going to be reasonably warm and we could do it. But the weather could not have been worse. However, with COVID, we were looking from the standpoint of we couldn't play indoors. The state of Maryland mandated that any state institutions 
couldn't be indoors. You couldn't go into restaurants. Right. And so I thought, well, why don't we play outdoors? You know, you've got a lot, plenty here outdoors. You're playing with, with plenty of uh, ventilation. It was a, a hard no. So when they asked me if I wanted to play outdoors one game, because they had a, uh, Towson University had a gymnastics tournament, I said yes, and I thought this, this would be a great way to start this. Logistically, you take the trucks, you load up the field, bring it down to the football field, uh, you erect it, put the glass up, everything else is pretty, pretty much the same. It's like a giant uh, Lego set, and we would put it up and we would play the game. Uh, it was, you know, on its face it looked pretty good, just, just the one variable is the weather, so we didn't luck out. But uh, I was looking forward to it, and a lot of people were too. We sold quite a few tickets. We refunded the money for those that wanted to have it refunded, but it was uh, one of these things where I, I was really excited about it. And like you said earlier, that's something you're looking maybe to do next season? Actually, I spoke to the facilities people this morning about doing it again, and they said, if you want to do it, let us know. It would be more towards the end of March. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so, David, I want to kind of kick it back over to you. Um, so, end the season, right, 11-11-2 record. Um, what were your, uh, what did you see maybe from the beginning of the season compared to the end of the season? Yeah. Um, as, as, as a coach, I have to forecast, right? I have to play the season before it even starts. So I break the season down into four, four areas, 6-6, uh, 6-6. Six, six, six and six. And once I break it down for six games, I gather all my evidence, then I go through developing what's needed, implement, and then I monitor. That gets us ready for, and that's why a lot of people were like, hey, why are we always ready around the playoffs? Why does it look different? Because that's what the growth is. Uh, you're growing players. So the biggest thing now is that the same thing. I've gathered all the evidence. Uh, we know what's needed. Um, once we secure the spine of the team, and that looks like uh, making sure we secure some really tough players. You know, I know Ed's gonna talk about some guys, but, uh, but you know, players like Victor, uh, you know, Victor Perez, making sure that his security is up here more. Uh, Diego's uh, strong goal score. And then with the other inclusions, you know, it's going to mention a couple of names, but that's important. Uh, and the integrity. It's not easy finding players. Uh, back in the day, indoor players was, you know, finding top talent players. It is easy. There's a different culture and climate now with the game. You got the USL that's got three leagues, you got the MLS, and you got players that's coming outdoor that's, you know, so we're trying to make this also um, a good pathway for young top talent, and that's going to be our reach this summer. Okay. Um, you kind of mentioned a couple of players earlier, I, well, and we could, this show could go on for an hour or two if we talked about every single player. But I did want to t touch on a few, all right? Uh, the first one I wanted to touch, touch on was uh, Juan Pereira, all right? So uh, you would know better than me, but looking from my perspective, with, uh, with Melo being out with, yeah. because of certain reasons, it really looked like uh, you were putting a lot more responsibility on Juan. Uh, and so talk about kind of his role, how it differed a, a bit this season. Yeah, you had to be. Um, and, and that becomes a natural behavior with, with talented players. Not only do I have to look for them, but they put it on themselves as well because they want to win. Uh, so you'll find is that he had had to adjust his own game for success. Uh, uh, Tony Donatelli, you know, had to adjust his own game for success. I have to move him down the back because the methodology and the way we play. Um, so there were some players that was that was called to order, and they done everything they can, you know. And it's a matter you can't change time, and in time there comes your development. We didn't have enough time to do what we're supposed to do. And I thought the guys with that said the ones. I mean, and, I mean every time I met with, hey guys, breathe. Just breathe and understand, you know, and I do understand the position they was in because they kind of had to expose themselves a little bit because they have to do more. All right, all right. Uh, and then you mentioned two younger guys earlier. I wanted to just talk about them a little more. So Omar uh, and Pacheco, right? Um, you could really see them grow into their own as the season kind of went on. Um, was that uh, them getting used to kind of our style was that um, you know them just kind of growing into the game because we talked we've talked about this before. Yeah. Uh, you could really see the growth from the beginning to the end of the season. Yes, uh, one is that uh, back in the day we played 44 games for a whole season of 44. It was about a rookie actually got the legs underneath him, so they both had to be, be 
you know, be fast tracked. Oma, we knew also we needed left footed players to balance out the game. So there's a lot of strategic process that's right. been done with it. Oma, good pass with the ball, but yes, he's gonna have, he got some tough love during the season, and I was on him, so, but he can handle it. Uh, Pacheco, he comes in, and also both of them going through identity crisis, right? Trying to figure out where do they fit in, that right. takes time. Right. It's gonna take you about 10, 12 games. That's why you saw them starting to really peak once you got around that 14, 15, 16. And that's what's required of them. Um, you know, they've both done really well, and those both uh, those two players are going to be around for a long time. Yeah, yeah that's exciting because, like I said, they really were looking um, a lot more comfortable near the end of the season. So, Ed, I want to come back to you. Um, what can what can the fans expect as we move forward here? Some good news. First off, I'd like to comment about uh, you know, Tony and Adriano. Those guys gave everything they had. Tony was our leading scorer this year, and we'd like to have them back in some form next year. We, I really would hate to see them leave the team, and we're going to try to find something for them, like we've always done with some of the older players, to keep them around uh, in various jobs with us. You know, Lance Johnson, David Bascom is our coach. He is one of the star players on our team. We'd like to do that and do the same thing with those guys, but we have, uh, we're, I'm really happy with the way that Juan Pereira played. He stepped up. He did well uh, in the face of not having Mello. Mello, I'm happy to announce today that uh, he has got to the immigration status where he's going to have the ability to play next year. That's great. And this is a big move for us. He's one of the, the most favorite players maybe in the history of the Baltimore Blast. Yeah. You've been around, your father was around with yeah. us. Uh, he, he is very, very popular, got a great family. Uh, we're looking forward to having him back. He's going to be a big improvement. Um, we have uh, Alejandro Chavez that we uh, purchased him from Harrisburg. He's going to be playing for us this year. Arguably, he's maybe one of their best players, if not their best player, next to Dominic Francis. And then David's going to announce uh, you know, another uh, defensive player. Uh, we haven't signed him yet, but uh, we, I met him a couple days ago. And uh, he's a big, left-footed, smart guy with a great pedigree. So we're looking forward to having them come. So we're going to be putting on more, more and more players and looking forward to having them. And uh, we, uh, I, I don't do this to, for any other reason except for I love the game. I think our game, I don't think it's ever spoken of enough. Our game, that game is a fantastic game. It's a lot of fun to watch. The fan experience at Towson University is, is really a lot of fun. Uh, we get along with them pretty well, and we're looking forward to continuing this and making things better. And I could talk to you about that a little bit, uh, a little bit later on, David. Okay, David. Did you, so I'm gonna throw it to you from from the boss here. Uh, what do you got for us? Well, you know, um, <clears throat> here's the thing: is that going out and finding good talent, you got to put your work in. Um, so uh, let's talk about Mallow. Just the <clears throat> having Mallow back. Um, just the heart of the team in the midfield, uh, creative, uh, but also a very, very good leader. And then you're pairing them up. Think about it, you got a Mallow, then you're putting them with a Pacheco, then you got Omar coming out of the back, but I also know that our defense needs a lot of support. Uh, the young man, Mateus, a very, very good player. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really gonna help us bring a lot to the game, so if we can, you know, get that all squared away. Uh, then you're looking at Chavez, you know, good one-on-one, uh, it's gonna complement and support with Juan, take some stress off of Juan. Um, and I think that's gonna be important. We need uh, to continue to, one, defend well, but also have some good defense. Uh, so we're moving in the right direction. Uh, but he always asks, where do we find players at? Well, what, what we have done, and I'm not gonna say the areas, because I don't know how the teams know, but what we have done is basically set up some combines in certain areas, uh, you know, in the US. And that's gonna help us. The one thing I know about players, players find players. Right. And when the players that are here that know the integrity and the culture that we have here, that's who we're going to look for. So you're going to find that a lot, and we're going to host around three open trials just so we can also be a feed system out of our M2. Okay. Um, Ed, kind of going back to you now from uh, kind of the overall perspective, um, anything else you had for as far as um, – you know, next season and, and what the fans can expect? Well, we, I've requested some early dates for just for planning purposes for our fans. December 6th is probably going to be, that's a requested start date. That's a Friday night, it's not a Saturday. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we're going to start then maybe the following weekend and then 
uh, January 4th are the dates that I've requested. So there's three of those dates. Towson, I, I've asked to meet with them this week. We can do that. Uh, I've met with uh, Aramark, the caterers, and this they agreed to this and that we're working out the logistics. But we're going to have a bar this year, mixed drinks, uh, you know, behind the uh, broadcast area, and the up big concourse that we bought 20 high tops, so you'd be able to stand around and have a mixed drink if you want. Uh, Dave and I have talked about some different drink prices and different drink uh, types, <laughs> and uh, I can't say them on. <laughs> I can't say them here, but uh, but. They're actually pretty funny, but we're looking for something. Uh, we're going to name the bar something, and uh, we're looking forward to doing that. Uh, I've asked them to come up with uh, Aramark, again, the new caterer there. We do special nights like uh, sushi night, Chinese night, Mexican night, meatball night, something like that, and have it there. Uh, so there's some different food variety for you know people that if they want to come up and stand at the high top and have some sushi, and we'll do that. Now, it sounds... Uh, it's going to be something that they really want to do because we we draw more people than most all the other sporting events that they have there sure. and we expect that we're going to have to keep on doing something new we have new uh, products that are going to do concessions that are going to come out of course but we're going to also have more merchandise and a different uh, different type of merchandise which will will be uh, Michael is here filming this right now who's going to be doing pictures with us for us and we're going to start broadcasting them now for next year. So we're way, way, way into next season right now. So it's it's those things, but getting the schedules together uh, for if the moms who want to have birthday parties for their children, we don't supply food or you know don't provide food. Uh, we're going to see if Aramark can do that for them. So you, you don't have to bring your own food or birthday cakes in. Uh, we're going to do things that make the actual fan experience a lot more fun and easy. You come in and you get, you know, ticket prices are going to stay the same and you get free parking, free parking, free parking. And it's a nice, clean, beautiful place for people to come to watch a soccer game. Right. Yeah, the free par free parking is a great, great perk for oh, people because yeah. you go to any sporting event nowadays, parking is oh, you know, $30, 40 50 Yeah, it's crazy. Well, when you used the old arena, we would go downtown, like I would come from my house in Edgemere, I could have to come through the tunnel, pay the toll, and then people, a lot of my neighbors would come and they'd have to pay for parking. And at that point, it was like 20 bucks per car. Now I hear it's much worse. And traffic is, is tough, and uh, Towson, it's free parking. And we, we try to make it so that, that was one of the key ingredients of me making a deal with Towson. If there's no charge for parking, I'm coming. If you're gonna charge for parking, I'm not. Right. And that really would have been the end of the Baltimore Blast. But Towson did work with us. The uh, the president at the time, Kim Schatzel, uh, worked with me and on that, and she, she was very good. And I met Mark Ginsburg, her replacement, who just came in there. Seems like a very nice gentleman that uh, really was happy to have us there, and we're looking forward to making it better. That's great. <coughs> Excuse me. David, going back to you, uh, so we've talked about some players and, and some personnel we're bringing in uh, for next season. Uh, from a coaching staff perspective, uh, what do you think the needs are? Yeah, um, the needs, first of all, we don't, uh, you know, getting together doing the postmortem. The biggest need is that uh, consistency uh, and actually continue to fast track the players, finding ways, timing, uh, adding some things to our culture. Uh, to get the players, the new incoming players, up to speed quick enough. Uh, so that's one of the things that's very important. The structure, the alignment with the coaches, you know, been great. Uh, it's about now personnel. Personnel is the key right now. That's what the main focus, and just making it happen. You know, we're just going to make it happen. And it, this, it's, it's not good when you're on the the other end, and things are not going well. You know, so we don't have a choice uh, to make this right. But there's a lot of good things that's been happening. Now we have to show proof of concept, and that's the key, and that's the focus of the coaches. Okay. Uh, before I take it back over to Ed for kind of to wrap up, I wanted to talk just briefly about uh, uh, a couple specific games, um, and obviously, you know, a couple games over the whole span of the season isn't isn't uh, you know the whole the whole deal. But I wanted to talk about two in particular, and that was the Mexico trip, right? Mm -hmm. So. 
the Chihuahua trip, the Monterey trip. Um, we, I, I thought we played great in both of those games, two of probably the most difficult places to play in the entire league. Uh, could have come away with two wins in those. Yeah. Um, just talk a little bit about those two games in particular because you know I think we were up three or four on Chihuahua, uh, took Monterey to overtime, who was undefeated. Uh, talk a little bit about the cha- one, the challenges of playing there, because yeah. they're very difficult places to play, and kind of how proud you were of the guys, how, how they how they showed up. Yeah, well, uh, the first thing is start before we even got there. If you look at the position we was in the league, it's easy to fold on. Um, so we know is that every game we had to go out and we had to play, and we have to play to win. And that's the first thing that you know, I knew that we didn't have a choice to go down there for winning mentality. Uh, then when you're looking at the personality we had to take, because some guys couldn't make it, you know, it's a coach's situation now. And it's a coach's uh, uh, process that you have to coach the game. You have to do some things that's out of character. So we done a couple of things, shifted some things, and the guys showed up. Uh, and that's what we talked about is that timing, you know. So we're able to do that, and that's what I'm really proud of the guys. Uh, they came away. And the same, you know, uh, you know, it, it mentioned to me even when we're going through these games is that, you know, sometimes we shoot ourselves in the foot, right? And those games we done so well, but then little mistakes get magnified, especially against those teams. Sure. Um, so I mean, I was excited, I was happy for the guys. It was encouraging, um, and it's, it's it's just a matter of you know we got to show you know, what this logo stands for and the integrity and the responsibility and accountability for who we are, and we have to continue that. Now, I can go in as a coach, I'm saying, why now? Why does this happen right now? What happened before? Everything comes in time. It was supposed to be in that space, and I thought the guys really, really had some, you know, showed some good character. Yeah. So Ed, just wrapping things up, any last words for the Blast fans out there? Well, first off, what David said about the Chihuahua with the Mexico game, two games. It's very tough. I've been both places and it is tough to play in those areas. It's They, they always view it like Mexico against USA. That's the way it is. Right. And they have billboards up when we were going to play them and uh, I think Monterey one year and you know it's that's what it was. And it's difficult but I was so proud of the way that everybody played. With a depleted ranks we had to take some M2 people to go along just to field a team to go down there and to play them, I thought we got a crappy call from the referee. You know, they got a shootout. They win the game on that. You would, you know, I just didn't like it. I called, spoke to the referee, the head of the referees about it. What kind of stuff is that? Yeah. You know, of course we're out of it. They're undefeated. But still, we gave everything we had, and I was very proud of the way these guys showed up to play. And I expect that this year we're going to have a, a lot of character on the team. Coaching staff has got uh, everybody ready to go, and I, I really believe that we're going to do extremely well. I'll be very surprised and disappointed if we don't. And I'm, I'm not just saying that. Right. Everybody knows I'm pretty blunt, and uh, I expect that uh, we're going to do well. If I thought we were going to fold up and go away, I'd let you know. It was pretty iffy based on what happened to me last year. This year, different story coming up. And David, to you, just wrapping it up from you, um, thoughts for next season, excited for next season? I know we just kind of ended, you just kind of exhale now and breathe, but I'm sure you're ready to go already. That's it, we're ready to go and uh, continue to support. You know, we appreciate it and that's it. That, that is it, you know, we have to, we have to put a, we will put a good team together. And that is just it. One thing that David's told me right along that we've been, we're not allowed to talk to players yet, but a lot of people want to come here and play for us. They know what kind of organization that we have, what kind of coaching staff we have. Just the, the whole atmosphere here is good. And a lot of people do want to come, but we're going to wait till May 31st when free agency, our contracts run out, free agency starts. We're going to see about that, but we're also going to go out to places we've never been and try to recruit. Great, great. So guys, that's kind of how we're going to wrap things up for the uh, season this year. Don't forget to make sure you're following the Baltimore Blast on all the social media. Uh, avenues so you're keeping up to date with all the latest stuff, uh, announcements, signings, all that good stuff. And uh, with that said, we will see everyone next time. Yeah, thank you too, Brad. You know, I think you've done it. We were talking before, and I think you've done a good job with this. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.